Okay, so our next step, now that we have the motherboard installed, is going to be to put the hard drives in. In this case, all you do is slide out these railings, and the hard drive screws into here with the provided screws, and those are our two hard drives right there. Okay, so the next step is going to be to connect the motherboard headers to the motherboard. Uh, these include the button, the lines for the power switch, the reset button, the hard drive indicator light, the power light, and the speaker. Um, this particular motherboard comes with a, what's called a Q connector. So we connect all the wires in this first and then plug into the motherboard. If your motherboard doesn't have that, you just plug them right into the motherboard. Um, you should refer to your motherboard documentation book. That'll tell you where to plug everything in. Okay, so our next step is going to be installing the GPU or the video card. But before we can do that, we're installing water cooling for it. So we have to replace the default fan that comes with it with the water cooling block and using the RAM components as well. First step here is to remove the screws from the bottom of the GPU so that we can mount the alternate cooling block. There we go. Okay, so we've now removed the fan and heat sink which it is right there. And we've unplugged the fan from it. And then we just used a bunch of paper towels and wiped off all of the grease, all of the thermal grease, so that we can apply the new grease, which will go with our other cooler. Okay, so now we're going to apply the included thermal paste to the GPU. Okay, so it's on there. And I'm just gonna spread it around using this pack. Now that we have finished applying the paste for the GPU, uh, the next step is to place the thermal pads that cool the RAM chips, the PCI controller, and the V regulators. So those are just basically little pads that you stick on to the cooler, like so. Okay, so we've mounted all the thermal transfer pads here, and we are now ready to attach the water cooling block to the GPU. So we're gonna place it just like it was before, and it's going to use the same screws that it used before. So now we finished mounting on the new heat sink and water cooler for the video card, and now we're just going to attach the nozzles in for the water cooling tubes. And now that we have finished mounting the cooler on our video card, we're going to put it in the blue PCI Express video card slot. It's going to be a very tight fit, but it should fit. Oh yeah, look at that fit. That's close. Okay, so now we are mounting in the case fans, which are needed for, for ambient airflow within the case. It's important to make sure that you mount the fans in the right direction. The ones in the back may be blowing air out and through the back, and the ones in the front need to be pulling air, cold air in. In most cases, you want the label on the front of the fan facing in the direction of the air flows. Okay, now for the fans, they have to be plugged into power somehow. These particular fans plug into the motherboard. It's a three-prong connector. This allows the motherboard to monitor the fan RPM and adjust it accordingly based on the temperature. If your motherboard does not have this capability or for some reason you want to do it the other way, there's another way in which this adapter plugs in and it just is a standard Molex and then you can daisy chain them together like that. Um, and then some fans only have this as an option. So we'll just plug the fan in right here to the fan socket in the motherboard. And this particular motherboard has four fan, fa four fan sockets for four case fans. We've just plugged in the IDE cables for the CD drive here and the floppy drive here. And now we're ready to hook up the water cooling tubes. And the first step of that is to cut each tube to length. So I'll start by cutting the tube for the CPU. First, we have spring wrap that we put on to prevent it from kinking, and this just goes, this is not completely necessary, but it helps prevent it from kinking and also looks cool. Okay, so we've got it onto the fitting now, and if you have trouble getting it on all the way because the opening is too small, what you can do is insert a pair of needle nose pliers into it and open it up, and that helps widen it a little bit, so it makes it easier to put on it. Now we just put this over it, screw it on, and that's it.
Uh, I'll just walk you through it here. First coming out of the radiator on top, CPU. Out of the CPU into the GPU. Out the other side, we have a drain valve over here. So if you ever need to drain the system, you just hang this out the side and put a bucket under it to drain it. Uh, then it comes back up and around here and back into the radiator up on top. Uh, like I said before, we have the spring wrap, which helps to prevent it from kinking, which is especially important here where there could possibly form kinks. 